Around the world, we've decided certain ages carry societal significance, and we often attach projections to ourselves when reaching these milestones. Turning 30 is one such pivotal age, burdened with personal and societal expectations. But what if you reach this age and haven't achieved the goals you anticipated, either personally or according to societal norms? How do you navigate the weight of feeling like a failure or a disappointment? I'm writing this in anticipation of my birthday. I found a little retreat in the middle of nowhere. I tried to book it, but the owner got back to me saying she's traveling and can't host in that time. So I kept searching. I could have gone to any of these Instagram trending locations in Portugal, but oftentimes they're not really my style. I've never been a fan of sleek, modern interiors, grandiose luxury, sparkling, sterile kitchens, glass railings. I like things that have only become the way they are because of time. I like history. I like texture. I love things that take a little longer but have soul and nostalgia. Is it really a surprise that I chose to live in a city where an innocent afternoon walk can land you on a property that is over 800 years old. So back to my story. I searched and searched, but I kept coming back to this exact property. And I don't take no for an answer because experience has taught me, ask and you shall receive. So I went back to the owner and said, pretty please. I can't find anywhere that my spirit is yearning as much. And true to the word, she comes back to me and says, I won't be around, but let me ask my friend if she'll be willing to let you in and watch the property while I'm gone. Et voilà. So here I am en route to this place to celebrate my 30th in tranquil solitude. For this major milestone, I wanted to meditate, read, be in nature, take some action steps towards my big goals, and also do absolutely nothing. While I have hit some of my Achieve by 30 goals, some still seem a long way off. And sometimes the anxiety hits me because I wonder why is it taking me so long to do this thing that it seems like everyone else has figured out? So off we go. I believe in taking full individual responsibility, at least in my circumstances. Of course, if you live in a war zone and you haven't achieved your goals by 30, that's a different case. But if you have the time and internet to watch this video, that probably doesn't apply to you. And to be fully transparent, I've been struck by meeting people in the past couple months who are around 50 and are far from the life that they hoped they would have at that age. I'm tired, but what a lovely day. So I'm not here to say Oh, it's okay to not achieve your goals, as is the rhetoric on the internet these days, because I don't subscribe to that line of thinking. I think if there are some things you sincerely desire, key word is sincerely, so not because society says so, but because you've done the internal work and know that your soul is calling this thing in, it's never too late to make changes to align more with those things you want. And I'm using the pressure of this new decade to realign.
That being said, it's important to manage these expectations that we put on ourselves. There's a difference between high expectations and unrealistic expectations. Pressure that motivates and one that simply cripples you. And sometimes I find myself towing the line. Crippling pressure is completely useless because the thing you're looking to is so far ahead of you, it feels impossible to be able to bridge the gap. I don't know about you, but that just makes me want to crawl under my sheets and do absolutely nothing. I'm more interested in the pressure that facilitates aligned action. And in case it's not clear, this is more advice to myself than anything else. If it helps you too, great. So the two most important ways I'm overcoming this feeling of being behind are one, taking one small step towards each goal. Whatever it is that I want, how can I take one small step towards it? The way I think about this is really creating a beautiful life, the life that I want. I have subcategories, health, relationships, wealth, etc. Then I tackle whichever subcategory is most pressing. So if under health, you want to get more active, but have failed to maintain your gym membership, maybe a reframe is needed. In my case, under this category, I now work in a space that is about 20 minutes away from where I live. So I'm guaranteed at least 6,000 steps per day just getting there and back. And then when I take a lunch break, I can also squeeze in another two to 3,000 steps. I've also stopped buying things in bulk because running out weekly at least forces me to walk to places to restock. I've learned that being active needs to be linked to a purpose for me. Just working out to work out, a la going to the gym, does not work for me. So this is my small step to hit my goal without feeling like I have to drag myself anywhere. The second, and arguably the most important, is being as ruthless about what I want or value in my life as I am about what I do not want or value. I learned this one from Ramit Sethi. The fact of the matter is, we only have so many hours in a day and one life. Anything I do now, anyone I spend time with now, simply out of obligation and not because there's any real mutual benefit or joy is taking up the space of the things I really want in my life. I have people pleasing tendencies which means my boundaries could be porous and learning this has been a game changer. If you're a people pleaser, it can bring up a lot of uncomfortable emotions, even anxiety when you have to say no to people or pull away from a relationship, but I promise it's the best gift you can give to yourself. Not only will you now have the time to actually take the steps towards the things you actually like, but it's kind of like magic. Things start to fall into place. Things that you only once dreamed of. This is something I need to constantly remind myself of. Choosing to spend my birthday here was one way I chose me over societal expectations. I don't actually care about elaborate cake, birthday photo shoots, and the other birthday traditions. But being in nature, 
in a place that inspires me, where I can hear a branch crack, that to me is invaluable. So for those like me feeling a bit behind in life, enough with the sad sub stories, let's take one baby step forward and let's be ruthless about what we say yes or no to. Tell me in the comments, what's one baby step you take today so that when the next birthday rolls around, rather than feeling behind, we'll feel proud of the changes that we've made, that we are closer to our dream lives or perhaps living it.